Welcome, this is Megan Mitchell with Agents of Change, and I'm here today to bring you, we are going to go over some practice questions. This is backed by popular demand as one of my social work shorts. Today I have three practice questions. Um, I will read them. I will break them down and through process of elimination, show you how to get to the correct answer. So going over practice questions is a really great practice to get into. It really will help you start to see some strategy behind going through the questions, and it will ultimately give you some skills to help build up your confidence as you're approaching these questions on test day. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So here's a little bit of a advice about approaching practice questions. Knowing that on this exam, you're going to see mostly application and reasoning questions. It's not going to be like a standard true and false or um, recall test. This test really wants to see your ability to reason through questions and apply what you know to different case scenarios. Like I said, completing practice questions is just as important as studying content. And why that is, is because you want to get in the pattern of using a strategy to break down practice questions. Sometimes you might get one sentence in your question prompt. Sometimes it might be a little bit lengthier and you might have two or three or four sentences. So you really have to work on your reading comprehension. You need to work on pulling apart those questions to get important clues so that you truly know what the question is asking you. My advice, read each question two times through. This is because sometimes at first glance, we might miss some information. So reading through a second time, really use a more critical eye to really pick up on that information that you might have missed um, in your first read through. So always read each question two times. If you need to read the question more than two times, that is okay as well. You just don't want to miss big chunks of information. Um, after you've read the question, you always want to ask yourself, what is this question asking? Can you say back to yourself what this question is asking. A lot of people are like, I don't know what the question is asking. If that's the case, you might need to read through it one or two more times because you're not going to be able to answer a question if you don't know what it's asking. So take the information, synthesize it, and ask yourself, what is this question asking? Before picking an answer choice, read all your answer choices. I know sometimes we want to immediately jump to what we think is the answer choice, but this test, every word matters. Every word matters. So you want to make sure that you're reading every answer choice and reading all of them carefully. One word might change an answer choice, so you wouldn't want to jump to one answer, and then there would be a better choice that you overlooked. Um, best advice I can give is use process of elimination. Rule out ones you know are not correct. If you can get it down to two answers, it's going to be much more easy for you to manage the answering question process. Um, you'll see me model this as I go through these practice questions today, but always eliminate ones you know you can rule out. That's going to help you a great deal. And also your chances of getting the question correct are going to improve. So use process of elimination. Okay. Our first practice question, I will read it, I will break it down, and then in the next slide, there will be the correct answer. So I want you to take some time to who, sit with this question and try and answer it on your own as well. Number one, a social worker is doing a home visit for a family with three kids. The family has just lost their grandma, who was the sole provider, and have moved in with their father. The father is court mandated to attend anger management. Upon arrival, the worker sees alcohol cans on the ground. During the visit, the dad becomes verbally aggressive and kicks one of the children in the stomach multiple times. The social worker's first response should be to A, call the police, B, make a CPS report, C, intervene to de-escalate the father, or D, video the event for documentation purposes. Go ahead and read this one. Okay. Things you want to point out here. Your role. You are a home visitor. 
you are going into the client's home, this always gives us a much different perspective, right? Because they're not in an office um, or out in a community setting, we are actually in their home. So we get a lot to see a lot more and when we're visiting for home visits. Other important things, some stuff has gone on for this family. They've just lost their grandma, that's important. And they've moved in with their father. The father is court mandated to attend anger management. That would probably most likely suggest that there are some anger management issues going on. The worker sees alcohol cans, and then there is a problem. Ask yourself, what is the problem here? You're on this home visit. The father becomes aggressive and kicks a ch one of his children in the stomach. We are witnessing this father kicking his child in the stomach multiple times. This question says, what is your first response? So if you get a question that asks you what to do first, you need to order the answer choices. Some of these things, these answers we might do at some point, but we need to think of Maslow's hierarchy of needs and address basic needs and safety before anything else. Given that, we can start to eliminate some answer choices. First, we can eliminate C. C is out. Intervene to de-escalate the father. Safety first. We're not going to put ourselves in danger. Intervening could make this situation worse. Instead of de-escalating the father, it could actually escalate him further. C is out. Our next choice that is out is D. Video the event for documentation purposes. This also could further escalate the father. And this is just not a practice that you want to get into starting to video um, an altercation that's going on. D should be out as well, which leads us to A, call the police, or B, make a CPS report. When you're reading this, you should be thinking, I'm probably going to do both of these things for safety purposes because we're actually witnessing the child being in danger. Given that we're actually witnessing this and we need to respond immediately to the safety situation, we can rule out make a CPS report. We are definitely still going to make a CPS report. But given the clues we have from this question stem, we actually have to, for test purposes, we should call the police because from the clues we have, it seems as if the children or the child is in danger, right? kicking the child in the stomach multiple times, simply making a CPS report. If you call CPS they, and there's immediate danger, they will tell you to call 911. So we're going to do that first. And then of course, follow up with a CPS report, but we need someone to come there and assist us um, because this could be potentially get very, very, very critical safety wise for the child. So the correct answer for this one is call the police. For test purposes, if you are in danger or if your client's in danger and it's an immediate need, you need to go ahead and call the police. Remember, this is our first response and we don't take calling the police lightly, right? We want to make sure that um, it's really reserved for cases where it's an immediate safety concern. So we need to call the police this due to um, the verbal aggression we are seeing occurring. Question number two. A 35 year old client makes frequent statements of contemplating harm to himself. Which of the following would be the most important safety indicator to consider when conducting a safety assessment? A, the client's network of support. B, the client's access to emergency psychiatric services. C, expression of a preferred method or plan or D, family history of suicidal ideation? This is a risk assessment question, a crisis assessment question. Go ahead and read this one. As you can see, this question stem is a little bit shorter, but what information do we have? What is the question asking you? We have a 34-year-old client who's making statements of harm to himself. So we have a client contemplating harm. This question is saying, of the following answer choices, 
what is the most important to consider in terms of this client's safety when we're assessing? So when you get a most or best question, all the answers could make sense, but one is going to stand out as being better than the others. And for this, you will have to have some sort of information about um, risk assessment and crisis safety assessment and management. So going through these, we can start eliminating. We can eliminate A, the client's network of support. That is important, but that is not going to be our strongest indicator of if this client is safe or not. We'd probably want the client, to, we'd probably want to know about their network of support if we were safety planning with the client. But right now we're trying to conduct a safety assessment and find out what's going to be the strongest indicator if there's a real danger or a real threat. Um, we can also rule out D, family history of suicidal ideation. That may be an important piece of information, but that's not going to be our most important indicator right now in the here and now if our client is safe or not. So A is out and D is out, which leads us to answer choices B, client's access to emergency psychiatric services, or C, expression of a preferred method or plan. If a client has a plan or a method to go through with harming themselves or committing suicide, that is the strongest indicator that um, we need to follow up on. So B would be out, the client's access to emergency psychiatric services. We may need to refer them to emergency psychiatric services, but in a safety assessment, biggest indicator if they're unsafe is if they do have a plan that they have thought about. So if this client does have an expression of a preferred method or plan, most important indicator that they may go through and are unsafe. So remember, safety first. So the correct answer for this one is C. Most important safety indicator is going to be if they've expressed that they have a preferred method or plan of harming themselves. Other things are important, right? A, B, and D may be important, but C is our strongest indicator. Okay, our last question. Number three. A pregnant 16-year-old has been referred to the school social worker. The client is shocked by the news. She is scared and overwhelmed, yet she is determined to keep the baby. Clinically, the social worker finds herself having a difficult time supporting and connecting to the client through her pregnancy journey. How should the social worker respond to the situation? A, seek out supervision to discuss and process these feelings. B, discuss referring the client to a new provider. C, refer the client to an outside community health agency. Or D, discuss with the client the pros and cons of continuing with the pregnancy. Go ahead and read this one. Okay, here, you always want to ask yourself, who is the client? A 16-year-old who is pregnant. So we are dealing with a minor here. Age matters in that you should have a sense of what's appropriate. You should be thinking of what developmental stage they're in. 16-year-old pregnant. Your setting matters. We are a school social worker, so we are working in the school. Um, what is the presenting problem? There's a few layers here. Your client is pregnant and she's 16 years old. Her symptomology matters. She's scared and overwhelmed, yet she's determined to keep the baby. That's the problem with our client. However, this question notice goes further to bring the social work into it. The problem this question is asking is that the social worker is having a hard time supporting and connecting to this client throughout the client's pregnancy journey. So the presenting problem here, four terms of the question, is this sentence right here. Social worker finds herself having a difficult time supporting and connecting to the client through her pregnancy journey. The last statement, how should the social worker respond to this situation? So this is kind of a question where social workers having some values come up. They're maybe having a values dilemma. 
um, some feelings are coming up for them and they're not feeling that they're able to connect or support this client. So in a situation, this question is basically saying the social worker is not able to connect or support this client. How should the social worker respond? We can start process of elimination. And remember here, we're looking for the best answer that speaks to the code of ethics, speaks to right to self-determination and answers that question. We are going to avoid referring this client out at this point. We don't have an enough information to suggest that our values dilemma would require referring out. So given this, we can eliminate B, discuss referring the client to a new provider. That's not necessary at this point. Or C, refer the client to an outside community health agency. That doesn't answer our question of, we're going through a values dilemma, what do we do? So you also want to always eliminate answer choices that don't answer the question. D is also out because it does not answer the question. The question is, how should the social worker respond to the situation? Discuss with the client the pros and cons of continuing with the pregnancy. We may do that at some point, but that does not answer the question here, which is social worker is having an ethics dilemma or a values dilemma that they're having a hard time connecting and supporting the client. So we are looking for an answer that's going to help the social worker process those feelings and assess those feelings and then from there make a plan. So B is out, C is out, and D is out. So process of elimination, our only answer choice still left is A. Seek out supervision to discuss and process these feelings. So this is kind of a supervision question. When do you seek out supervision? If you're having a values dilemma or you're having some feelings come up or you feel like you're not connecting to a client and you need to process this with someone, seeking out supervision is definitely appropriate. It's in the code of ethics that you should do this. Um, it's in the best interest of the client. So the correct answer for number three is A, seek out supervision to discuss and process these feelings. So as we went through those questions, you may have gotten to the right answer, but notice there's a process and strategy to use to kind of pick apart the keywords in these questions. So always ask yourself, what are these key words? Which is, where is your client? How, what is the age of your client? What is the presenting problem? And lastly, always ask yourself, what is the question asking me? Notice here we did process of elimination and oftentimes you can easily get to the answer when you're able to rule out the incorrect ones. So I hope you found a few tips that you can take for looking at questions, breaking them down. And it's really a lot about looking at the question, sitting with the information and examining it a little bit closer. You might have to determine what's important, what's not important, and um, that will also help you organize your thoughts as you are thinking through these questions. Um, and notice that they were different lengths, right? One was a little bit shorter than the others, um, but you can still use the same strategy. So hopefully you found some of these breakdowns helpful. If you are looking for more content, I do have paid content out there. You can check it out on my Gumroad site. And then if you have any questions, you can email me at the email below. And I always want to lead, leave with a little word of encouragement. And that is um, thank you and give yourself grace. This is a really big step you're taking towards licensure. Um, trust yourself, trust your gut and know that you are strong enough to get through this test. You got this. Thank you for tuning in.